Hello and welcome back. After you created your show in Symphalite with several layouts, with several sequences, you usually want to do the last step before going into a production state and to have automation and control for your show. Automation and control is covered in Symphalite in the automation section and this consists of the trigger engine and the graphical user interface editor. We will here have a look at the trigger engine of Symphalite and the trigger engine is a very powerful tool in Symphalite and because it is so powerful and has so many possibilities I will only explain here the basics of triggers, conditions and actions. If you want to go into detail and use the more complex parts of the trigger engine, for example, in the actions, the change property or invoke object method, then please have a look at the manual of Symphalite, free for download from our websites. Now you have a detailed description. We will only cover the basics right here. The automation in Symphalite consists of triggers, conditions and actions. A trigger is raised whenever an event happens in Symphalite. This can be something that is time-based or date-based or it can be a sequence state has changed and a trigger usually leads to an action and this action can be starting or stopping or pausing a sequence, skipping to a queue or sending data to the outside world. If this action is really executed, is determined by a condition. And the condition looks at the state, for example, of a sequence or checks a property or watches for a time condition or date condition. And only if this condition is true, then the action is really executed. You can combine conditions with AND and OR operator and you can invert conditions to define the conditions as you want to have it. Let's begin with a rather simple trigger and action. If you go to the settings of Symphalite, you can define that the last safe project on startup will be loaded. And if this show was loaded, which would usually be your real show to be used, and Symphalite comes up, is started, then you want to do something. And this is made with the show initialized trigger. You just drag and drop a trigger from the trigger library to the workspace. So when the show has been initialized, what to do? Let's say we take the action to start a sequence. And in this case, we want to start sequence number one. So when the show has been initialized, the sequence number one will be started automatically. This is an example for a rather simple trigger and action. Let's now take a time-based trigger. And I use the time trigger here. And I want to do this weekly on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday at 10 o'clock or 10.30 latestly, I want to create this trigger. I want to limit the execution of the trigger. And in this case, I check if a sequence is running. So I drag and drop a condition here and I will invert this condition. If sequence 2 is not running or if sequence 3 is not running, then start sequence number 1. So this trigger now comes up on every workday from 10 o'clock or 10.30 latestly and if sequence 2 is not running or sequence 3 is not running only then 
sequence 1 will be started. In this way, I can limit the execution of an action from a trigger by several conditions. So now this is a more complex trigger condition action system. An example of control of sympholoid from an external data source, we can use data stream received. The trigger will be raised if over the serial port the string A001 an ANSI condition is received. And if this happens, we will check a property. And with check property, you can check a property of an object in Symphonoid. In this case, I want to check sequence number two. And the property should be the playback state. And if this is running. So when this message is received over the serial interface, then it checks that the sequence 2 is running. And if it is running, I will change now and start sequence number 1. Even in this case, I can invert an action. So I have inverts on the action level and on the condition level. And this gives a whole bunch of control possibilities with triggers, conditions and actions. The combination of all the possibilities in triggers, in condition and actions gives a really huge number of possible automation and control functions in Symphalight. And this includes not only sequences or queues, but also external data sources or external control. This, as a short overview, as I said in, in the beginning of this video, if you want to have details about triggers, conditions and actions, please look at the system manual of Symphalight from our website.